Welcome to this short video focusing on respiratory medicine history taking. Now this is obviously trying to help you develop your clinical skills but also to give you some relevant tips relating to forthcoming OSCEs. Now with respect to OSCEs, some of the key things which will help you are if you consciously attempt to build a rapport with your patients, that means using uh, the use of good body language even if that's on a video consultation but also, for example, avoiding the use of medical jargon. So one example of that is when we talk about chest pain, you may ask a patient if that pain radiates anywhere else. Sometimes patients don't know what you mean by that. So for example, you may need to change the way that you ask that, such as does the pain move anywhere else? Have a clear structure to your history taking. Also ask about all of the relevant symptoms relating to the respiratory system. Use summaries, particularly at the end of your history taking. Get your timing right, and that comes with practicing in, in multiple situations before you face your OSCE. And also anticipate common examiner questions. So obviously there's a clear structure to taking any medical history. Respiratory medicine is no different to that. It's important that you stick to this and try and remember this structure because obviously when you become nervous, in an OSCE situation, sometimes things can uh, deteriorate and therefore it's important that you have practiced this logical approach so that when you're in that stressful situation of an OSCE, uh, things still go to plan. Now, regarding respiratory symptoms, there are six key respiratory symptoms that we need to ask about when we're exploring a respiratory medicine history. And that's dyspnea, shortness of breath, chest pain, wheeze, cough, sputum production and hemoptysis. Now it's important to explore all of these symptoms in as much detail as you can. Uh, even if a patient only tells you that they have got one or two of these symptoms, so for example a patient may present with cough, but then it's up to you as a clinician to try and explore whether or not they have any of the other relevant symptoms relating to that. There may be something relevant. For example, they may also have shortness of breath, which they may not have offered to you uh, as, a, as a sort of presenting complaint. But if, you know, when you explore it in more detail, you find that that may well be relevant. So it's important that we explore all of the relevant symptoms relating to the system that you're exploring. Similarly, with respiratory medicine, it's also worth asking about fever and weight loss. Clearly, this can be really important with relation to any infection, but also maybe red flag um, symptoms suggesting underlying lung cancer. Now, with respect to past medical history, all past medical or surgical history would be obviously very relevant, uh, but you may wish to also focus on specific aspects of chronic respiratory disease, whether or not somebody's had previous chest infections or whether those infections have been recurrent or whether they started earlier in life or not. You may wish to ask about upper airways disease such as nasal polyps. You may wish also to explore uh, whether or not there's any previous history of thromboembolic disease, cardiovascular disease, cancer or any previous surgeries. With respect to medications, we obviously need to explore what drugs people are taking, what doses, frequency and the route. But it's also really worth exploring the adherence to medications, particularly if somebody's got chronic disease. And using asthma as an example, if a patient presents with an acute asthma exacerbation, it may be relevant to explore their drug adherence to their regular preventative inhaler. As an example, they may not be using their preventative inhaler regularly, and that, that may actually be a factor as to why they presented with an acute exacerbation. In addition, for any medications, we want, want to also explore any over-the-counter drugs, anything bought online, or any herbal medicines that somebody's taking. With respect to allergies, obviously it's important to establish if somebody's got a true allergy uh, and what reaction they had and when that was, if possible, but also really distinguishing between genuine allergy versus side effects or intolerances. Family history, of course, is very important and there's a number of things which can be explored and these are often similar to the, 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 the things that you've already asked about in the past medical history section. 
Respiratory medicine social history is very important. Um, so things like smoking, of course, we know that they, it's important to establish whether or not somebody's a current smoker, they've been an ex-smoker or they've never smoked, but also now uh, with vaping, it's important to sort of explore whether or not somebody vapes, uh, whether or not they smoke other recreational drugs such as cannabis or inhale anything else. Occupation, occupational history is very important, so we want to un understand what jobs people have had going back all the way to school. And we may specifically ask about asbestos, which is very relevant. And also asbestos is important to ask about in the context of the home situation. So people may have been exposed to asbestos, not just in a work situation, but potentially at home as well. So you know, older homes may have asbestos or have had asbestos in fireplaces or chimneys or old boilers or roofs, uh, in, the, in particularly old, old types of tiles. So it's important to ask about that in, in the home environment as well. Pets are really important to discuss. So things like cats may be relevant in, in the context of atopy or asthma. Uh, but birds, particularly budgies, parrots or pigeons may be associated with the development of interstitial lung disease. And it's not just uh, you know, patients' own pets that could be an issue. It's worth exploring whether or not people have contact with animals or pets when they visit friends, uh, neighbours or, or family. Foreign travel is very important um, for two reasons. One, for the development of infectious disease, but secondly, for venous thrombolytic disease risk as is immobility. Uh, it's important to ask about activities of daily living. Uh, we, you may have a, an older, a more frail patient, but also somebody, if they've got chronic respiratory disease, uh, they may be impacted or um, disabled in some way. Uh, and it's therefore important to ask about uh, activities of daily living. Also, performance status is very important if you have a patient with suspected lung cancer and you can use the world health organization performance status to try and identify their level of fitness which may be relevant to establish what treatments they may be fit for if they have lung cancer and as you get towards the end of your history taking uh, session with your patient then you know you may have time to go on a comprehensive review of systems um, I'd recommend in, in an OSCE situation that you, you potentially don't do this, and that's, and that's something which seems particularly relevant, as you probably will not have time to go through all of these in great detail. But what you would find more useful is moving on to a final summary. Essentially, when you summarize in front of the patient and your examiner, the key points in terms of your understanding of the history that you've been given by the patient. And that gives you an opportunity also to try and fill any gaps or try and invite the patient to offer any, any bits of information which haven't already been established, which certainly would be very helpful to you as you move into your discussion with your examiner. So the common types of uh, OSCE examiner questions, there's very few that we can ask relating to history taking, but things like, can you summarize the positive features of, of the history? So you want to have practiced beforehand summarizing history taking into potentially 30 to 60 seconds of very relevant aspects of uh, the symptoms that the patients have told you, relevant aspects of medications, drugs, allergies, etc., family history, social history, and trying to put it into one uh, comprehensive package. You'll probably be asked about differential diagnoses that you th you're thinking about and also why. And you may also then be asked about what subsequent examinations you'd like to perform uh, and also examine, uh, sorry, investigations that would be relevant in terms of starting to manage your patient. So just really reminding ourselves of those top tips for an OSCE situation. Consciously build a rapport with your patient. Have a clear structure that you, you stick to in your history taking. Ask about all of the relevant symptoms relating to that particular system of the body that you're interested in. Use summaries, particularly at the end of your history taking session. Get your timing right and that will come with lots of practice and anticipate common examiner questions. Thanks for listening.